Bill Belichick should never coach in the NFL again. Now, you're saying, you're saying, Shield. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, all right, Shield's going to talk about how Belichick actually did a bad job last year, about how he was nine games under 500 in four years since Tom Brady retired, about how he built a terrible roster, about how he made some baffling hires on the coaching staff. That's not what I'm talking about, Solak. This is actually complimentary. I'm talking about Bill Belichick, content creator. Okay. This has been a flat out revelation over the last couple of weeks. So here's what happens. So like a lot of times when someone in sports comes across as boring or unlikable, there are people, you know, close to them or media members that say, no, 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 you don't get it. Once you get to know this person, they're great. They're funny. They have a personality and a sense of humor. Most of the time, that's a flat out lie. It's not. They're, they're boring. They're not that entertaining. You know, it's, it's like the whole athlete funny thing. They're complete bores. But guess what? With Bill Belichick, it might actually be true. His breakdowns during the draft, so like, they were terrific. He was prepared. He had actual analysis. He wasn't afraid to be critical. He had good energy. It was like he got coached on how to do this. He seemed to realize his job was not just to inform. We know he can inform. He's got a lot of, you know, he's obviously has, is a smart football mind. He knows the league. He's got stories. But he was also able to entertain during the draft. And then Sunday, the Tom Brady roast. How, how much of the Tom Brady roast has been so lacking? Zero percent, and that is exactly as much as I would like to watch. This does, <laughs> does, does not interest me. <laughs> does not interest him. There, there, right. There's not a single, like, a, a, a single piece of, like, Oh, like it's lifestyle and it's reality TV and it's roast, but it's football a, a, a content that I have enjoyed over. The, I don't. I'm not a big hard knocks guy. I didn't watch the quarterback documentary on Netflix. <laughs> I didn't watch Tom Brady roast. None of this. I'm here for. I'm here for the football. All right. I'm here for any of the any of the the trappings around it. All right. I'm, the purity of the sport. She love of the game. Actually, as I was asking you that question, I was like, you know, you, you know, you're like my nephew. I was like, I don't know, is this appropriate for Ben? I shouldn't even be asking him this question. This might not be appropriate for Ben uh, uh, to uh, watch. Uh, I, I, I appreciate you protecting <laughs> me from the 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 coarse and and rabid world that is the Tom Brady roast. <laughs> so anyway, Belichick during the Tom Brady roast, he gets out of his comfort zone. I know he didn't write all the jokes, okay, but. He gets up there in front of that audience, that stage, he makes fun of Gronk, he makes fun of Danny Amendola catching straights, he makes an Alex Guerrero joke, he goes for it. And guess what? I was entertained, and I never thought I would say this, Solak, but there is massive potential to Bill Belichick content creator. The last thing I need is for 73-year-old Bill Belichick to return to the sidelines to a team next year and go back to being a complete miserable. I don't need that version of Bill Belichick anymore. I want this version. This is the perfect final act. He appears to be having fun. He knows the players. He knows the league. He has stories. All the ingredients are there. And this might sound like hyperbole, but I'm dead serious. I think he can be the best ex-coach player analyst we have. I, from what I've seen over the last two weeks, I want to see what he can do in this space. I want him to stick with it. So owners, stay away. Billy boy, welcome to team content. Uh, let's not go back, my friend. All right. Okay. What do you think? Let me, let me throw some cold water <laughs> on this real quick. Because on the NFL draft show, we had this debate a couple of weeks ago where I was like, Belichick and content. Like, this is, this, like, it was right when he signed the Manning cast deal, right? Because he's going to be on the okay. Manning cast every single year. And I was like, this is not going to be good it's not going to be entertaining and everybody was like no it was great whatever whatever and firstly again like m me being a football purist i just don't think the manning cast is very good like, people oh i love the manning cast it's amazing no it's not it's not <laughs> enjoyable mean, so like if you are in the you know football content media space so like it's just cr gonna crush you during this episode it is not it's not it's i i, I like <laughs> he's I not interested Peyton and Neil, I need to get better at being on TV. Like they're like, like oh the God. whole, the whole like, like bumbling. We're confused. We don't know when we're tossing oh to, to break. We don't know how to like transition questions. Like it was funny and cute in like year one, but we're in year three or year four or whatever. It's kind of all right. Like I'm, you got a celebrity on crazy. Like I'm, what's happening? I want to watch the football. I think Belichick right now is, is, is benefiting from super low expectations right we're absolutely like when belcher got on mcvee and it was like oh he has clearly watched the prospects like cool like he's willing, he's able and willing to talk about them and then like the roast thing i mean I, I, that doesn't interest me at all like he had somebody write jokes for him great uh but but this this is 
this is coming in with the expectation that you're going to act like he always has acted at press conferences, right? Where he's like doing the football stuff. He doesn't want to be answering any of these questions, but this is a, this is a, such a different world than that. And so, okay. Like he's, he's, he's friendlier with Pat McAfee and he's, he's willing to sit up on stage and do the roast thing. Great. But there, there's going to be a Tony Romo effect here where in year one, and he's going to know everything about all the players and all the teams because he was just studying all of them. So he's going to have free insight off the dome. Every, he's gonna, he can walk out with no prep and say, I, I agree, like way more interesting and enlightening things than almost anybody else in media, anybody else on a desk. And he's going to say stuff on the Manning cast where he and Peyton are talking about the mechanics of calling a timeout correctly in the two-minute warning. It's going to get all over the, the, the internet for two weeks. It's going to be such cool insight. But is, is Belichick really going to approach media with the amount of, of like – interest and dedication and detail oriented that he did coaching football i i would be stunned right how i i don't think media's gonna hold his interest like i and, and accordingly if he stays in media long term so here he's gonna be the best media guy there ever was i i think he's gonna go the the roma way where after a few years we're just like oh you're just kind of coasting right you're just kind of going off what you know like i don't think belichick's going to be like the 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 dedicated five days of prep scheme analysis guy when he's 78 years old no. And he's like, oh, I guess oh, when making- he's 78. Okay. I thought yeah, you said he is right. 78. Okay. Right. When, he, when he's just <laughs> making millions of dollars from all these media deals and he can just hang out and go like watch the cross and vibe. Like, I, I don't think that he's that that's going to hold his interest uh, enough for him to be like media savant Bill Belichick. I don't buy it. Okay. First of all, when did you take over the grouch mantle uh, of this? podcast and i'm team sunshine <laughs> what, when is did this you because take over you're the, about to be bill belichick man <laughs> exactly like, yeah, this, this is, is role this, well, this should be our product. theme for the show role reversal extra point taken first of all uh he had he already had we can only go off a small sample and he has put in the work for the appearances that he's done so far i mean the draft he didn't need to do all that you know what he did and scout the players he was out of the league already before he needed to watch these guys and this doesn't have to be a 20 year thing the guy's in his 70s give me the next 3 years where you already know all the players in the league and also uh i disagree with the notion that he wouldn't put in the work i mean tony romo the way he approached his career and the way bill belichick approached their actual like football careers were very different and so it stands to reason that they might approach this in a very different way. Like Bill Belichick has been a football junkie. He cares about the history. He knows the history. He has analysis on current players about trends, all those things. So I actually uh, disagree with that. I don't think he would mail it in. I think he would be too embarrassed to just go up there uh, and mail it in. I think he would put in the work and I think he would be very good at it. I think I want him calling games. Honestly, I as I was watching, I was I was like I would love for him to just be a you know in the booth. During one of these primetime games next year. I, here's, here's, let me, let me, let me, let me hop to the defense of the game callers. Okay. Okay. Calling a game takes a lot more skill, like a lot more like, like talent on the mic, on the, on the, the juggling of all the balls and the, all the pots on the stove and the understanding of the flow and how it's going to play on television. It, like, I, I think a lot of times when I talk to like my regular pals, they're like, just calling a game, like whatever. Like, like they, they, I don't think people realize the amount of skill that goes into it. It is a really challenging and hard thing to do. I think it is. It is like uh, uh, it, it. It waves away. It disregards the work that like Greg Olson put in. Like Olson started and like was not good, and then put in time to get good. To say like, oh, go like Belichick call games, right? Like, oh, like if 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 we and I'm I'm sure we will. Like, I think your prediction is absolutely correct. If we hear in two months, like oh, and you know, NBC's thinking of putting Belichick on Sunday Night Football as the color guy, like right now, and that wasn't made up. I don't know. Like I'm not saying Chris Collins was doing anything, but like oh, they're gonna Belichick on the A team. I think that's gonna stink. I think I think I think he's gonna walk out. I think he's gonna get five easy weeks. Or he, where like, he, or not even five, like fifteen easy weeks, like one whole season where he knows everything about all the scheme, and like it, it's again, it's Romo stuff where it's like it's cute that he's cutting off Jim Nance, and it's funny that he's like blumbering through his sentences, and like Romo does his like you know like his random sounds or whatever. Belichick will probably be like you know eight awkward seconds of silence after they cut to Taylor Swift. He doesn't know what to say. Well, I'll be like ha ha ha, how adorable. And then after a couple of years, we'll be like, wait, this isn't pleasant. It, 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 you have to actually like learn how to do that. And I'm unconvinced that Belichick will be interested in learning how to do that. Why should he? He's the greatest head coach in NFL history. Why should he sit down and have some like TV executive explain to him how to call a football game? Teaching your grandma how to suck eggs. Like, I don't, I don't think he's going to care about it. Uh, it's called personal pride. Solak. And uh, well, like when you were saying Greg Olson, I was like, why could, wouldn't he put in the work that Greg Olson 
put in. I could absolutely see him doing that. I mean, the guy's been on a coaching schedule for his entire life. Like, I, it does take work to call games and be good at it. I, I agree. Like how you're it's so a much easier the lifestyle. A seventy-three-year-old is like ready to learn a new skill. When was the last time you met a seventy-three-year-old who learned a new skill? Okay, uh, listen, uh, mom and dad, Kapadia, if you're listening, don't worry. You know, we've got uh, we've got your back. You can learn new things. We can teach you. Know, my dad knows how to use. You know, he he, he can text. Uh, you know, he can sometimes get to this podcast on. <laughs> <laughs> Huge for him. Huge for him. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, we disagree on that. I like it. A little role reversal. Solak's usually the one gassing Belichick up. Now that Belichick's out of coaching and in this new space, I'm telling you, the guy has the potential to be really good. It's a small sample. I didn't think I would be saying that. I thought I'd be ripping him. I thought I'd be taking Solak's angle on this. Uh, I'm not. I think if he puts in uh, the work, and I think he would put in the work, uh, this is going to be a nice final act for Bill Belichick. We'll